Hey, it's Mike Dia down Pepper Tree Lane. Let's talk disco today <laughs> and do a little bird watching. Uh, incredible heavy rains last night and beautiful skies now at the beach in California. So disco really hit big about late 75 until maybe late 79. It was a very late 70s phenomena. And then something happened. We'll discuss that. So the band I've chosen is Heat Wave. Um, I remember at like junior high school dances, Heat Wave would always be played. I didn't know much about them. They weren't much of a, a lot of disco bands were almost like anonymous. It just was before social media. You may not have known them that well. But they were an international group formed out of England, surprisingly. Uh, London. There was this genius producer in the band, the keyboardist, and um, really talented. He wrote and arranged all the songs. I think his name is Rod Templeman, okay? And he, there were guys, African-American guys from Ohio. The drummer was from Hungary, <laughs> just randomly, you know? Um, there was a guy named Mario, something from Europe, um, and just all over the world. So they all brought something to the table. And right before they were really hitting big, one of their guitar players was murdered. I don't really have details on that, but he was murdered and replaced. Okay. So that was tragedy number one. And then the band just hits really big with Boogie Nights. That was like around 77. Like I said, I remember the high school or junior high dances and boogie nights. That's, that was played all the time. I'm going to give you three classic anthems with this band to go check out and play. You're going to love all three. So boogie nights, and they had great dance moves, very energetic and fun, and a party band, basically. So then um, they wisely chose a ballad to kind of balance that out. And it was always and forever, just beautiful vocals. And it's used as a wedding song. So it stayed popular just within the world of weddings and anniversaries that had took on this whole other life beyond disco and ballads sometimes have a better chance of being evergreen uh, because everybody always loves a ballad. They don't go out of style. So that was big. Another huge hit record for them. It made it to 18 in America. I'm surprised. I thought it was like a number one hit, but it did go top 10 in many other territories. And then comes the second album in 78. And that one was um, Groove Line. Wow, what a great song, Groove Line. Check out the YouTube videos, and they're all kind of dancing in these little formations, and they have these snappy steps and um, polished vocals. And off to the side is that keyboardist, that British guy. And like I said, he wrote and arranged everything and went on to work with Michael Jackson to give you an idea of that pedigree. But he said he ultimately wanted to be a writer, and the heat wave knew that. I think they knew their days were numbered right from the beginning. He just said, look, I'm a writer, producer kind of guy. But they had this magic moment. So Groove Line, at any party you're at, put that on, and it will get people on the dance floor. It's a evergreen, perennial dance song. So... That was their peak. Two big albums, three huge songs. Heat Wave was a hot, popular disco band. And at the end of 78, boy, the magic spell is just gone. And this Mario, the bass player, goes to a party by Elton John, a Christmas party. And he gets in a fight with his girlfriend it's kind of sketchy. She leaves the party early and goes home. And then he follows her home. She pulls out a knife and stabs him in the heart. Okay. And he goes into a coma. He, a month later, he wakes up 
blind, paralyzed, you know, in bad shape. He can no longer perform with Heat Wave. But he goes back with the girlfriend. He doesn't press charges. Um, he goes on to become like an Eastern guru of meditation. I mean, he gets his sight back. He learns how to walk again. I mean, that's why I'm doing this. I'm not, I wanted to pick a tragic band that made um, lemonade out of lemons. And he had like a near death experience. He was in a coma for five weeks. So he, you can look him up, um, dig deep into the band. And, um, you know, he followed a mystical path. It's incredible. Um, the story um, of what became of him. He became a public speaker and all of that. So um, then in February of 79, Heat Wave is like, okay, nevertheless, we have to carry on. We're going to go back into the studio and make a new album for 79. This is February, okay? Then the lead singer, Johnny uh, Wilder, is in Ohio. He's in a horrible car accident. Like a van slams into him. And he almost dies, but it turns out he is paralyzed from the neck down. Really terrible. So that just screeches the brakes on heat wave, you know. Uh, he does recover. He finds out he can sing still. Thank God. So he does become like a studio, you know, producer with the band and singer, but obviously no longer the front man on stage. And so they carry on. Uh, they have an album called Candles. It doesn't do as well. You know, everything's about live performance and all of that. It just really hurt them. They, they didn't, didn't quite have a big single on that record. And obviously were devastated by Mario and Johnny and these horrible injuries. Um, Johnny went on to become a, a Christian um, singer. He made many Christian albums and he was inspirational. And you should see the videos of him. He's so happy and dynamic and love and life. And um, he had a lot of new technology in his wheelchair. I think he was able to work with music from the computer, you know, like this was back in 1980. So he must have been one of the first when Teddy Pendergrass had a horrible injury and flipped his car and was paralyzed uh, as well. Apparently Johnny Whitaker really, I'm sorry, Johnny Wilder, Freudian slip there. <laughs> uh, Johnny came to his side and really helped him say that, hey, you can still sing too, even as a quadriplegic, and really helped Teddy Pendergrass get over that injury in 82. So um, anyway, the band tries to carry on. What happened in 79 was people kind of got sick of disco. It's It was great, but like this high falsetto voices and the endless, you know, the the beat was almost always the same and people just got tired of it. And uh, a DJ went to a baseball stadium and he blew up a bunch of disco records. You can look this up, but that was like late 79 and uh, there was a backlash for quite a while. So the Bee Gees and Donna Summer and Heat Wave and all of that were just not played in the radio by 1980. It was a time out. It was like, let's give this a break. Let's do something else. And like pop country was really popular and new wave was hugely popular from England. So late 79, 80 was a really interesting time in music. That's why I keep pointing back to it. And I have a video called the music wars of 79. That's what that's all about. Very unique time in music. So, um, heat wave does one more album in 82 and, you know, disco's dead in the water and it's hard to reinvent yourself. They probably tried and did some minor um, R&B hits around that time. And that was kind of the end of the road. But um, 
like I said, both of these guys became severely injured and were able to go on with inspirational and spiritual lives. And definitely, uh, if you noodle around the internet, you can find out more about Heat Wave and see them, you know, making their recoveries and making these inspirational speeches. And Heat Wave did get back together and, um, you know, do kind of the heritage band circuit of uh, bands that with all, all different members that come in and play concerts and uh, may make an album now and then, but mostly it's about the concerts because disco came back. Everyone by the end of the eighties is like, Oh, we love disco. Like how can you resist? And it all comes around in cycles. And I think by the nineties, disco was kind of accepted as, this great era in music and it was classic and sure let's play disco at a party it'll be fun it'll be retro hip you know so it all came around but i would say it took a a good 10 maybe even 15 years so um a lot of disco bands just so you know were more producer driven and the artist was almost like an anonymous studio singer and maybe they had a one hit and they just disappeared and there was no real band and it was all kind of manufactured, which was another problem with disco and why it was hard to sustain. But Heatwave was a real band, uh, once again, based out of London. I was surprised about that one and uh, real big in Europe, obviously. So check them out and... And uh, look into the day Disco died, and Steve Dahl was the DJ who blew up all the records and had a bulldozer in, um, oh, it was like Detroit or Chicago. In summer of 79, he did that. And um, that was the backlash that happened. And although there wasn't social media back then, it took a little while for that to spread, maybe a, a few months here and there. Uh, so I'll leave you with that. It's Mike D at downpeppertreelane.com. Please check out my cool gifts in my shop and support my work. Like and subscribe. Thank you.